In this video, we'll take a quick look at seven different ways that you can sum in Excel. In this first example, I have a table that shows regions and months. I'd like to get a total for each region and a total for each month, plus a grand total. To do that, I'm going to select all the cells with numbers and then go across to the empty column and down to the empty row. Then on the Home tab of the ribbon, go across to Auto Sum, click that, and it puts in your grand totals with one click. If you look at a cell, it's put in a sum formula. For the next example, I've got quantity and amount for four different cities, and in this row I would like to get a total just for the West. In this column, I'll use the plus sign to get a total for LA and Seattle. And to do that, I'll type an equal sign, then click on the LA amount, plus, and click on Seattle. When I press enter, I get an error because this is text. So you can use the plus sign, but you might get some errors if text is included. In this column, I'll use the sum function. Type an equal sign, SUM, open bracket, then I'll click LA. I'm going to press the control key and click on Seattle. That automatically puts in a comma and the next value, then close the bracket and press enter. So that gives me the correct total, even though there's text in Seattle. So if there's a possibility that some cells might contain text, use the sum function instead of the plus sign. On this sheet, we'd like to get a running total for all these bank transactions. In this cell, we start with 100, then we took some out and put more in a few times. So as we go along, we'd like to see what the current balance is. I'm going to start at the top cell. And for every cell in this column, I want it to total from the first cell down to that cell. So if I'm looking at this cell, it should total from C2 to C4. So here I'm going to use the sum function again, equals sum, open bracket. I want it to always start in cell C2, even if I copy it down here to C6. To do that, I'm going to type the C, and then a dollar sign, and 2. That will lock that in place. It's called an absolute reference. So that's not going to change as I copy the formula down later. Then a colon, and it should end in this row at C2. I'll close the bracket and press Enter. And because this is a table, it's going to fill down to the last row automatically. When I look at the formula in cell D6, it's summing from C2, because we have an absolute reference there, and it goes down to C6. In row 5, it goes down to C5. For the next example, I would like to get a total for a specific item in my list. I've typed the word binder here, and I've highlighted the rows, just so you can see which ones should be included when I create my total. In this cell, I'm going to start with an equal sign, and to use a criterion with a sum, we can use the sum if function. S-U-M-I-F, open bracket, and first we have to tell it where to look for our rule about what to add. I'm going to select all the cells that have item names, then comma. The criteria here is in this cell, we could just type it in the formula, but it's a lot more flexible if you refer to an entry you have on the worksheet. Then a comma, where it should add the numbers based on this criteria is the quantity column. B2 to B10, close the bracket and press enter. So we get 27 as the total when we look at these three cells. In this example, we'll do a slight variation on that sum if. I want to add up anything that contains pen. So I have pen, pencil, gel pen. So if it's got P-E-N, upper or lower case, doesn't matter, but if it has that string in it, I want to get the total quantity. 
So we'll use the sum if function again. Type in equals sum if open bracket select the range to check and a comma. Now this time I don't want just an exact match here, so I'm going to use a wildcard character, which is an asterisk, and I'll put that inside double quotes. Double quote, asterisk, double quote, then an ampersand, then the word or string that I'm looking for within that cell. So I'll click on A9, then another ampersand, and double quote, asterisk, double quote. So that's going to combine a star, which is a wildcard character that means any characters or no characters. So there might be something before it, and then look for pen, and there might be something after that. Then a comma, and tell it what to add if it finds that string. And we want it to add these quantities. Close the bracket, and press enter. So here it found pen, pencil, and gel pen, and those numbers add up to 26. In the next example, we want to use two criteria. I want to get a total where the item is pen and where the month is two or later. So instead of using sum if, we're going to use sum ifs. Equals sum ifs open bracket. Now in this case, we're going to put the sum range first. So that's the cases. And then a comma. Our first criterion is the item. So we're going to select all the cells that have the item names and then a comma. And the first criterion is pen. So I'll click on that cell, comma. And then we can add more criteria. So the second range to look in is the month number, comma. And for that, we want to look for two or greater. So within double quotes, I'm going to put greater than, equal to. An ampersand to join that to the number that we're going to use as our minimum. And that's in cell B10. Close the bracket and press enter. So we get 16 cases in these two rows where there's a pen and the month is two or greater. On this sheet, I have a table. The sum of all these units is shown here. I use the sum function for that. But I'd also like to be able to see a total for just the visible items if I apply a filter to this table. And to do that, I'm going to use the subtotal function. So in this cell, I'll click and type equal subtotal, open bracket. There's a list of functions we can use, and you'll see the sum function here. I could use this one, and it will ignore any hidden rows from the filter, but it won't ignore any that I've manually hidden. I'm going to scroll down a bit further and these ones that are in the hundreds, there is a 109. I'm going to use that. I'll just double click. That puts 109 in as my function. It will ignore any rows hidden by the filter as well as any that I've manually hidden. I'll put a comma and then tell it which rows to total. So I'll select all these units, close the bracket and press enter. The totals are the same because the list hasn't been filtered. I'm going to move these totals down just below the list so that they won't get hidden if I filter the table. And now I'll come over here and I'll filter and I'll just remove binders from what's visible. Click OK. And now only these items are totaled in our subtotal cell. Everything is still totaled in the cell that's using the sum function. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.